What's up everybody? Brett here, back today playing some more Warcraft 3 Reforged. Sorry for the long gap in between videos for those of you who are like really digging this series. I appreciate you guys for coming back for this. We are going to start today on the Night Elf campaign, Eternity's End. Never really thought about what the name meant before. But knowing how the story ends, that's a very fitting name. Very poetic. I like that a lot. Um, our first chapter is Chapter 1, Enemies at the Gate. And yeah, we're going to start it in just a second. Guys, this is the final campaign for the original Warcraft 3 experience. After that, we're going to be moving on to the expansion. And that one's going to be pretty sweet. I hope all you got to do is let me know um, what it is you want to see. I'm happy, happy, happy to do just a complete full playthrough. Um, whether a ton of people watch it or not, just let me know in the comment section if you enjoy this series and if you would look forward to something like that. Because there are so many games right now vying for my attention. I even got lucky enough to get early access to one of my favorite games, the Total War series, um, with their company CA. And that was huge for me, and that kind of threw off my entire like schedule of what I was going to record and when, and those episodes ended up being hours long, so it just kind of really threw me off. Uh, but So I'm finding it difficult, I've got real life stuff going on right now that's pretty complicated, and recording stuff layered on top of that, and you know, life. So I'm trying to prioritize, and this is one of my favorite game series of all time, and I'd love to be able to prioritize this pretty highly. If that's something you guys want to see. So, long ramble over. Let's jump in to the beautiful yet dangerous Night Elves. So we're going to be playing on hard as usual. Let's do it. So chapter 1, Enemies at the Gate. With the heroic sacrifice of Grimash Hellscream, the pit lord Manoroth was slain. And the demon curse that had plagued the orcs was put to an end. However, the combined human and orc forces have moved deeper into Ashenvale Forest to ascertain whether a demonic threat still lingers in the land. Taronda Whisperwind, the leader of the Night Elf Sentinels, believes that the Outlanders will bring only doom to her enchanted homeland. So as Thor as well as Grimash, we've killed a hell of a lot of Night Elves uh, in those few missions. We also remember we killed Cenarius, their demigod, kind of like a satyr character. That was no bueno, because he was one of the strongest entities probably in the world. And he was there the first time the demons invaded. And, you know, he helped fight them back. Manoroth was actually personally impressed by his uh, his powers, as he kind of puts it. Um, saying they were quite formidable. So, we have no reason to be friends. Humans, orcs, like, none of us. We None of us are going to be friends. So, our new character, Taronda Whisperwind, let's introduce her. Pardon, Priestess, but you've been staring out across Ashenvale for hours. I sense something dark stirring within the forest, Chandris. It feels as if it's heading this way. The Greenskins who killed Cenarius? Perhaps. Perhaps something more. Put your backs into it. Jaina and the Orc War Chief expect this base to be built swiftly. Ah, we shouldn't even be here. Or oh, siding with the Orcs. We're here to hunt the remaining demons, human. You're lucky our goals are the same. All right, you men. Mind your business. Back to work. So... These orcs and humans presume to run rampant through our lands? They will regret ever stepping foot into Ashenvale. We will establish a base and deal with these outlanders as they deserve. Alright, so let's get started. First things first, all of your buildings are trees as we've seen in some of the earlier uh, orc missions. The Tree of Life is the heart of our Night Elf villages. 
Use the tree's ability to entangle the gold mine. After entangling the mine, send wisps in to extract gold. You got it. So the wisps are going to just kind of hug trees and occasionally give you five wisps lumber. Are friendly spirits that harvest gold and lumber for our villages. They also create the structures that allow us to train more warriors. All right. And they, whenever you use them to build a building that's essentially a tree, they die in the building. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Immediately. We'll scout around here with Taronda. So be it. It's going to give us a couple pro tips here. I wanted to say during the cutscene, I love that the uh, all of the different paladins that are in the story have their own unique... By Elun. Like models. I thought that was a pretty nice touch. To leave this place, priestess. There is a terrible evil corrupting these lands, and I will not allow it to consume my people. Unfortunately, we cannot leave until the rest of our tribe has been accounted for. Do not fear, old one. I will find your tribesmen and lead them back to you. Thank you, priestess. We will reward you when you return. All right, so now we got to go find the missing fur balls. It'll give us something to do all over the map. And you'll notice. So be it. So one of the first things that Taranda has going for her is that she is a ranged hero, which is kind of unique, right? Let's see, let's set these guys onto lumber. Now you know what this guy needs to come here. Everyone else is going to harvest wood for us. I heed the voice. The moon wells are the source of our nourishment and strength. You can build additional moon wells to nourish more troops. Don't worry, I will. The goddess so that's one of her strengths. The night elves can hide during the night time. During the day, they are unfortunately always visible. Create more moon wells. Okay, now we need more moon wells. So moon wells are kind of like their purpose is twofold, right? Uh, on one hand, to train more troops. Oh my God! An ancient of war. We're gonna be we're gonna be interrupted quite a bit in this uh, particular episode, but they're twofold, right? They're your population building, and they also restore HP and mana restore. to your units, and which regenerates. It's it's a small reservoir, and you can upgrade it later. I think the upgrade is in this game, and not just the expansion. Immediately. We're gonna want to scout around a little bit. Her one ability is the one that we saw her use in that cutscene. The scout, she can send out an owl to kind of scout around. It's invisible. Someone Not that useful it. once you already know the layout of every map in the way that I do. So we probably won't be putting any extra points in that. Um, we will be putting points instead into one of her other two abilities. There's either Searing Arrows, which augments her attacks, giving her Your bonus damage. Is complete. We'll set that so that it automatically heals whenever someone comes by. And we'll just go ahead and make another one, I think. Alright, and now we should be able to make as many wisps as we need. And then the other skill is a True Shot Aura, which increases range damage by up to 30%. And almost all of the units on the Night Elf roster are ranged. And right now we're rocking archers. I remember those guys were there, so we just... Guys. I, I say guys. Definitely not guys. Although they do need to get their eyebrows done. For sure. I don't know when it became fashionable to have your eyebrows match your ears. Okay, do I have enough wisps? Probably. I'll get a few more to start building our Ancient of War. I know we're going to get attacked at some point. I don't know how long it takes. But let's go ahead and get ourselves our Ancient of War. This is how we're going to recruit units. And then we might as well build an altar. That way, in case anything happens to Taronda, we can resurrect her. Oh, this is Chandris. I totally forgot about her. So, in the old game, she had a unique model, too. She looked a little different from the uh, the other night elves. You can see here she's got like a ponytail and a spiky bow. A little bit of armor. Cool. Cool. And she has better stats, Let's get going. like way better damage and more HP. No so very cool. 
Get an extra wisp. How many do I have? Six. I'm going to want one or two at least to heal. And I might even make another tree to come down here and get this gold mine. But we're going to be pretty Sorry. passive for a second here now. Sort of. Mm. We're just sort of waiting to be attacked. Your building is complete. And I wanted to be able to make more archers before we leave as well. So here's the thing about Chandra's. In the old game, if you lost her early on, that was it. You you couldn't get her back. And she's I like anything that's unique in a game. I like like lore, uh, unique characters. So I always try to keep her alive. Which is not easy to do in this game sometimes. And usually that means if I'm gonna like suicide attack a base, I wouldn't take her with me. I would just leave her here as like a base defender with a small group. Because there's gonna be times where we're gonna like push out to go do stuff, and we're gonna get attacked at home. So let's go ahead and set up a hot group here. We'll call this hot group four. And it'll just be for us recruiting. Swiss currently not doing anything. Might as well come over here. We'll make a little wall where we can just sit a bunch of archers right there. And this should be enough to kind of start scouting safely. Because there are pockets of enemies out and about. It's also nice for ones to be able to help the furballs instead of slaughtering them. For no good reason. The attack moving. Let's get going. Waiting on you. Want to get those built as soon as possible. That way they can start accruing energy for us. Alright, we found a couple fur bulgs. So be it. And for our trouble, we get a ring of protection plus one. I always destroy the buildings. You never know what you're going to find. And we have completed our base. And that's probably the trigger that's going to start sending stacks to attack us. As the goddess wills. All right, there's some dudes here. On your mark. Okay. Got to be a little careful here. Archers are not tanky at all. And you definitely want to focus fire. One shot, one kill. And a little bit of kiting goes a long way as well. And I'm going to want a lot more archers. Like, we're not even scratching the surface here. And you may as well... I don't think they'll attack me here. They might, though. Alright, they're all done. There is a... A fountain on this map. And a potion of healing, very nice. Immediately. And a scroll of protection. Yeah, that's why you blow stuff up. Alright, let's head back to town and get some healing. Immediately. And pick up some fresh recruits. I'm not going to worry too much about upkeep and going over and all that, that normal stuff. But let's get one of these in the back here. Get a couple in the back. I'm listening. I stand All right. ready. You guys are my base defense crew. The goddess calls. You guys are my attack crew. Let's get going. So I'll make hot Someone groups one and two. Fire. I'll probably add two more here. I heed the voice. Because I am expecting to be attacked soon. Okay. The voice they 100% come over here. Unbelievable. Well, let me I cancel this. Ready. I don't want to be attacked from that angle. I built everything... To not be attacked from that angle. Let's get going. Your move. I await your command. Oh, Jesus, run! Wow. Yeah, and that's pretty much what happens when archers fight away from moon wells. So that's all we've got to work with. So. The goddess calls. Your building is complete. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, and we'll just chill with the uh, the expansion. It's really not needed for this. Let's get going. But I do want to just keep let's just keep pumping out archers. Might as well. 
And let's uh, start exploring a little bit more. We got a decent attack force. But this is making me a bit paranoid, so we're going to come over here. And give ourselves a nice little ring of defensive moon wells. We found two more fur bogs. Should probably destroy their houses too. It was also great to be there. I like to be there for the first attack because it's so easy to repel on almost every mission with my hero because it's free experience. It kind of helps me catapult myself to the higher, higher levels. Although every level does have a level cap. You can't I can't go from like level one to level ten no matter how much I grind. Immediately. As I'm sure most of you are aware. Waiting on you. I stand ready. And yeah, we've got a nice little base defense force. Next building is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more to that. By and loom. Because we have a ton of them coming here, ready to go. Stand ready. Let's get going. Waiting on you. Someone All right. And here's the fountain. Okay, good to know where it is. We can attack. We can use this as kind of like a little bit of a base of operations. Come over here and attack. We can see this on the map since the beginning. Okay, guys, attack whoever you can and just. Don't die. Doesn't it look like she should just be able to run right through there? We'll send her to go get healed. Take this down just in case we need the gold mine later. I would recommend doing it if you have the time. While they're, you know, chewing away at this, you can focus your micro otherwhere. On your mark. If you need to. I'm listening. We're gonna want full I stacks. So we'll stick with that for now. We're already in low upkeep, it doesn't matter what we recruit. As the goddess wills. And the base that we need to assault is over here. It's kind of a really cool mix between orc and human. And once we cross this river, we're going to be in kind of scary territory where we have to fight. So let's try and find those furballs first. Ooh, they have a griffin rider. Multiple griffin riders. Ugh. Back up. calls. Alright, and we got our level. So, for me, it's a pretty big no-brainer. It's the, uh... It's the aura. So, 16 to 18 damage. We take that. She gets bonus 3, so, I mean, that's already 3 of the 10 that she would get. Not to mention, this does drain mana. And then every single archer gets 2. So, I mean, that's a pretty big combat multiplier. When you start saying 30%, Plus, you're getting these uh, these weapon upgrades later, so the percentages, you know, it, it stacks. I don't know what the I don't remember what the final number here is. It's like a plus seven, something like that. It's a lot of damage. It really is, and it adds up. As the goddess wills. Not to mention her own damage, which can go pretty high. Okay. Let's chill for a second, buddy. Let's go in here, try and save these furbolgs from these raiders. Always love how it always seems to put my most injured units right in the front. I just expect it. Raiders do siege damage. They're really not the scariest units we could fight. It's just they take reduced damage from Pierce, so they're not really that vulnerable to us. Because that's the type of damage that our archers do. I'm listening. But very good. Absolutely. That's our second stack. Come over here and save these poor furbogs. Did you get out of their way? So how many more? We need to find three more. I think in the old game there were more than ten. And I'm pretty sure you could even find... You could find like 13 or something like that, 13, 15. 
They put them everywhere just in case you had a hard time finding Our them, it seemed like. Grove is being desecrated. Yeah, and they're getting crushed. And now that we have tons of moon wells up, stand ready. we have lots and lots of healing. And we're starting to make some replacement archers in case we lose anybody. Ooh, they're attacking me from down here now. Okay, okay. They're all focusing pretty heavily. We need to focus here, that way we lessen their DPS and then we lessen the amount of strain put on our moon wells by actually killing models. But if we push in here, we can get more of our archers shooting. Later on, you can get an upgrade that increases their range. But yeah, guys, I highly recommend throwing up tons and tons of moon wells. Alright, we found those guys. Let's come over here and take these out. I stand ready, poor peons. As the goddess wills. I await your command. Get our base defense squad back. The way. Your move. Done. And whenever we attack the the big final base, we'll swarm in with so many archers, we'll probably lose half of them. The biggest counter to archers is just defensive buildings. They don't do any damage to them. Immediately. Here we go. So be it. And I think we just did it. We got it done. So all we need to do now is return. Point the way. Oh wait, I want to destroy these just in case. Cry havoc, Cry havoc and let the is it let wills. slip the dogs of war, I do believe. I stand ready. As the goddess wills. <clears throat> On your mark. I haven't read a book in forever. <laughs> that's what that's what thinking about that quote just made me realize. When I was a teenager, I read everything. I was reading I was reading like five books a week. And I was trying to absorb as many of the classics as I could. So be it. My son was being bad the other day. And we were just kind of chilling on the couch. I had to... Basically, he was... He's paying a little bit too much attention to video games, which is ironic coming from someone who has a YouTube channel focused on video games. But I'm a big believer in all things in moderation. And whenever I see like my kids get obsessed with something, like when it goes past the point where they're not they're really not having fun anymore, they're just kind of obsessed with something. I try to put a stop to it, but man, he was he was not able to quite shake the uh his newfound video game obsession. He was basically trying to use he was using the internet Playing some like uh, shady, basically internet games on some shady websites on his school iPad. That was that was the real big issue. Going on the internet unsupervised is definitely a no-no at his age. And uh, as the so yeah, as a bit of a punishment, which is where I'm going with this, we ended up no run, 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 run. I had her on attack move. She needs to get out of there. So be it. As a bit of a punishment. We sat down and we watched, I put it on Turner Classic Movies, the cable channel, and we watched uh, the black and white Hamlet, which I love. I can, I love Hamlet. Hamlet's one of my, Hamlet is my favorite play of all time. we can evacuate the village. Please accept the aid of our champion. He will protect your life with his own. Your offer is a generous one. May a loon light your path to safety. Alright, so now we get the champion. But basically it was interesting, and this is why I thought it was cool and maybe worth talking about. My son ended up really... he... I... he sat there and he watched it. And I kinda, you know, it's hard to understand, it's Shakespeare, right? Especially for, for kids. I know some adults who would struggle to understand what the hell they're talking about in, in many of the scenes. Um, but 
as I kind of explain to him the situation, which of course it's Shakespeare, it's a little bit messed up too. We've got this big champion we can use. Um, yeah, he liked it. And my daughter, who was pretending not to be watching while she was on like the Switch, like the way, she actually was getting like super into it, and it was just funny to see that. You never know what your kids will be interested in, so try and expose them, you know, to whatever you can. To give them a little bit of... Culture is probably the wrong word, but just... You know, if the first time you ever hear Shakespeare is when you're like... Like 14 and in, in like high school or something, it's like, man, that's not good. It'll be harder to appreciate it, probably. Someone threatens the wild. Like I said, Hamlet's... I mean, I, I, I flippin' love Hamlet, man. There's Let's so many life it. lessons to be learned. Like the way. From that one single play, so many, so many quotes Say no more. that I use not in daily life, but in damn near I daily life. Immediately, our warriors have engaged the enemy. Get them! I'm listening. Come see, y'all. Come up here and help. Before I lose this champion, before I even get a chance to use him. I've got everyone on attack move, so they should be okay. So be it. And here we go. Yep, there were extra fur bogs. Cool. We're not going to babysit them in this fight here. They're going to do as good as they can. By We've got end. enough to win this fight. Bandu Thoribas mortals, you will pay for defiling these lands. Excellent. I would also recommend. Oh, yeah, we lost all the fur bogs. That's crazy. And they are getting gunned down. Let's go seven. Bring them here. This is bad. We didn't want to engage until all of our groups were here. Oh, some healing wards. That's huge. We'll probably just take those with us into the next. Please. Please, just go. We'll take those with us into the next stage. As long as Chandras isn't dead. We could use the healing wards to try and keep them alive. It's just not necessary. And those champions did a good job for us. They tanked. So the thing here is just to get all the archers in. I could use a scroll of protection, though that's probably not necessary either. I also could have built extra Ancients of War. That probably would have been smart. Wow, big heal. Chandra's is fine. That's... Oh, and he resurrected. That's dirty. That level 6 Paladin power. And he's going to beat the hell out of Tyrande if I let him. What a crazy tough fight. Oh my god, and he got his shield again. It's insane. Make sure Chandra's doesn't die. Keep those coming. We can take him. Wow, he made that harder than it had to be. Ha! <laughs> Right when we softened up the orcs and the humans, instead of working together, they got crushed. 
We have to run away. Ugh. Feels so bad. I hate being a good guy fighting another good guy. Never feels good for me. But that's it for me today, guys. That's chapter one. They'll get a little bit longer as we go through. Uh, chapter two is going to be Daughters of the Moon. And yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I look forward to it. Hopefully you guys do too. Uh, real quick though, guys, if you like Hamlet, I would highly suggest the Kenneth Branagh version. It's got like his own, he's got his own take on it. Robin Williams has like a minor role. I love pretty much everything he does. You might have seen his version of, uh, I think it's just called Henry. Anyway, Kenneth Branagh, he's an awesome uh, filmmaker and actor as well. He's the guy, he plays in Harry Potter. Uh, I think he's Lockhart. I think that's the guy's name. The kind of like jackass teacher who ends up like wiping his own memory. That guy. Uh, yeah. And anyway, big British actor. What? Whatever. You get you get the point. Hamlet, Kenneth Branagh. Check it out. I've got it on DVD. I love it. Anyway, <laughs> it's like my sixth. Anyway, uh, I'm not good at segways. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one, Daughters of the Moon. And uh, yeah, later, y'all.